Awesome. How are you, Corey? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing great. Doing great. I apologize for the sniffles. I'm getting over whatever this is. It's okay, man. Listen, I got a kid in elementary school, so uh, <laughs> I am uh, I am heavily armed, heavily infected with everything that kids come home with all the time. All the time. Oh, yes. I also have two little ones in elementary school, and it's relentless. Yeah. It's like petri dish. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <I hate Yeah. it. laughs> but yeah. um, it's so nice to be able to talk to you again. Uh, I had a lot of fun talking to you the first time we chatted. Um, and I just had a few more questions about your absolutely time. Bring it on, President Alien. Yeah, let's do it. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. By the way, the third season is phenomenal it's like i yeah. was feeling sarah and uh and alice yesterday like such good balance between tragedy and like funny stuff and funny stuff like yeah man. really wild like insane stuff and then immediately like within a matter of moments you shift into something that kind of takes the legs out from underneath that and like hits you hard you know what i mean i think that's one of the really unique and kind of um one of our strongest attributes of the show is kind of the arc the journey um so within the episode being able to jump all over the place and feel all sorts of things um it's it's magical in some ways it is you know it's it's amazing like hats off to you guys from to be able to balance it out so well. it's amazing but you yeah. know just thinking about Mr. Sheriff Mike Thompson. Yes. <laughs> um, so he often finds himself in like the middle of like comedic misunderstandings, like the diarrhea mix up, which I'm still dying about. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So how do you guys prepare for these like moments and not break character? And, and what do you think they add to both like Mike's character and the show itself? Yeah. Um, you know, we're all, uh, sorry, a garbage truck's going on outside my house. Uh, the one moment I start to talk, smash, crash, bam. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, as, as the actors on this show, we're, uh, I feel we're in a very kind of unique position. Um, I'm not sure how many of us have been in a position where we've had so much influence over our characters. Um, our showrunner, Chris Sheridan, is next level. Um not just like talent wise, but also like incredible human being type next level. So there's a, um, what I feel is a sense of a sandbox on the set. And we get in there and we play. We know there are certain things we have to build or certain aspects of the storytelling that has to happen. Uh, and for the most part, you know, the script is the barometer of that. Uh, but once we get what we need from the pages, you know, our experience is that we traditionally time permitting, we allow us to maybe take a pass at, uh, um, you know, a take where we can try new things. Mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, it's in those moments when so much unique little one of a kind gems, you know, pop up. And what's great about um, the opportunity for that on this show is that it actually makes it into the show. In many cases, you know, I've been on other projects where, yeah, they'll let you take another pass. It's 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 corporate money. Yeah, we can burn another pass and let you have your fun. But I think you walk away from it knowing that it's very likely not going to make it into the cut with television in particular. Um, the scripts have been through so many hands and so many people have to sign off on things um, that by the time you're there filming, it's usually, you, we need to get what's on the page and we need to make our day and we need to get going. Um, uh, but we have a, a situation here where, um, there's this perfect storm of some really talented people. I don't mind to say that about our cast and our company. We're, um, it's also some people that have some real depth to their abilities. Um, we have a lot of good, great improv skills here. Excuse me. I have a little water. No, you're fine. You're fine. And uh, and so that sandbox foundation, that openness from Chris combined with a group of people who aren't afraid to look silly or try new things or, um, you know, create something unique. All of those things com combined create something really unique. And I think that's to answer your question, to come full circle to answer your question, I think that is ultimately um, what drives those scenes is the ability and the comfortness that we feel to try new things. Uh, and sometimes like, um, 
uh, this is an episode from uh, season two, but like the old town doctor ends up putting my arm to sleep. Right. And, you know, we're filming the scene and right in the middle of the scene, Chris yells, from hey, Corey, take your arm and swing it across the table like it's dead, like you're reaching for something. And we did it on one take. Oh, and that's, that's awesome. the one that made it in. You know what I mean? But it wasn't in the script and it was spontaneous. It was something that just happened in the moment. And to prepare for that, for me personally, I kind of just go into um, filming a scene. I got to know what's on the page, but also what the scene is about. Um, and then I just kind of stay present. I, I, I try weird stuff. Yeah. I do. I would love to see what happens to some of the stuff that doesn't make it into the show because we do have, we you know, they're not all winners. You know what I mean? Sometimes you try something and it doesn't necessarily work the way out and about as you thought you saw it in your head. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Anyway. No, that's fair. How much would you say is like improvised? All the the funny little moments that we Ooh. see. How much of that is? You know what's what's it? What I what I think is really cool is it's hard for the audience to tell. Right. Um, the really show's is. written so well that it really is hard for the audience to tell. Um, I'd say probably about. It depends, though. It depends on if if something really great comes out. I mean, that beatbox scene in the pilot uh -huh. was completely improv. It was not in the script. Matter of fact, we, you know, Chris and, and David Dopkin, our director at the time, we had talked about like trying it. But on the day we were in between scenes as they were turning something around and they were like, hey, you want to try that thing in the car? Let's just throw a camera up and see what we get. And and it made it in. Uh, and and it's it's a really cool part of the storytelling to have it go in. But to answer your question, I'm probably I'd say probably between 25 and 30 uh, percent is is improv. And we put little buttons on things like like, for instance, when Deputy Liv and I went undercover and Sheriff Mike's got this long, elaborate story about what he, you know, is his background or whatever. And then right as I was walking in, I improv that our three kids were named Simon, uh, Simon Theodore and Al Alvin Simon Theodore. So that was a part of an improv that took place within some writing, but it made it in as well. You know, you keep the stuff that works. We're That's all kind of slaves to the story. So That's awesome. No, that's I, You guys have insane talent. It's amazing. But speaking of Liv, um, like, you know, your his interactions with her and, and Lena after, like, it, they kind of give us a little peek of his personal life and, like, his vulnerabilities, especially in Lovebird and, like, the upper hand. Um, can you just discuss how this these relationships kind of reveal different signs of different sides of him and any kind of, like, challenge that you face portraying these dynamics? Oh, uh, wow. That's a great question. Um, to answer the first part of your question, um, you know, I think the, I, I think what Mike's confronting this season and probably in this phase of his life, um, what are the, the dogmas and the um, rules that he's put on himself about how things are supposed to be? Um, and how do you react when they don't work? And are you wise enough to try something different? Or or is the challenge of trying something new, does that outweigh the opportunity to gain something new? Mm. And I think, you know, that's what Mike is bumping up against. Uh, all the things that he's been told by his father about what men are, what women are, uh, all the things that um, he's told himself about what a man's supposed to be and, and how he's supposed to be. All of those things are slamming head on into loss for him, whether it was a loss with the deputy uh, and or whether it was the loss with Lena. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone who has any sense of self-awareness um, and is able to push their ego aside and not necessarily be driven by narcissism um, if you have a similar situation that's taking place in different avenues of your life, where are the places where they all intersect? Right. And that's you. Mm -hmm. So I think he's now trying to decide, you know, he, he doesn't like the loss. So he's got to change himself to prevent that, but he doesn't want to change. Right. So it's this constant kind of tug for him. Um, and, uh, and that's fun to play. Um, I think he's, you know, my goal always has been with Mike is to create a character like one I've never seen before. 
Um, and that's, you know, that's why he's got this, you know, this John Wayne swagger with this Bernie Mac, you know, attitude right. with the Richard Pryor demeanor. It's all kind of rolled all into this thing that I just wanted to just, just try something new, something different, like, and, uh, and Chris and, and David and, and Robbie and the other folks, you know, they all kind of embraced it. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm surprised I get away with half the shit I get away with on the show. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'll be honest, some of the stuff that I do and I'm kind of like, is that going to be already? Oh, it's hilarious. We'll love it. And I was like, all right, cool. We'll keep it. You know, I love it. I love Mike. He's probably, he's probably the, my, my favorite character I've ever played. I've Mike never, fun. yeah, I've never been able to be so spontaneous, you know, which I like. No, and it comes off. It comes off like the just how much you enjoy playing him comes off through the screen. It's great. Oh, good. It's truly good. Great. Yeah, it, it is true though. I mean, I love it. I love it. Liv, Liz and I, uh, we just have such a great connection. We get each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the first time somebody at like Reese's put peanut butter and chocolate together, <laughs> and they were like, "Holy shit! Wait, guys." God, have you tried this? You know what I mean? Like they all of a sudden discovered this amazing chemistry. And that that happened the moment we sat next to each other at the, the first table read. It just clicked. It just clicked. Awesome. She's the best. That's yeah. amazing. I, I love that. It just, you guys are all just, it, it seems like you guys are also like close, close and tight knit, like outside, well, like behind the scenes and everything too. Yeah. Well, and you know, and I think that's a, a result of COVID in many ways. Um, you know, we, we, you know, we were all, you know, kind of in a bubble ish with the cast. Um, we were tested, you know, three, sometimes four times a week. Um, and everyone around us had to be tested and masks and shields. And, and so like the, the people we knew we were safe to be around were each other. Right. Because we knew that everyone was taking every precaution and everyone um, and no one wanted to get sick because, you know, what people don't see, you guys see us on the show, you know, and, and, and the actors, you know, we get a lot of the credit and, and our, you know, writers to, to a degree, Chris, you know, Robbie get a lot of, but what y'all don't see is like the other 150 people right. who it takes to every day to make this thing work. So mm. getting sick and having production shut down would be bad for everybody. So we all took that responsibility very seriously. So we just basically like nested together because um, yeah. we knew we could like hang out with each other. So that that camaraderie is real. Yeah, no, and it's great. It pays off because we, the audience, we can see it. We can, regardless of what your role is, is and regardless of what relationship your character has with the other character, like it's just, you just know that you guys are comfortable with each other. And it's, it's a really yeah. nice and like kind of unique feeling to Resident Alien. You guys just seem very like a big family. It's just great. I agree. That's what we try to create. I hope, you know, it's, it's nice to hear that that comes through. Oh, yeah. Um, because that, that it's genuine. You know, Alice said it once in one of our early press meetings. She was like, you know, like, we really like each other. And not like these other shows. Because I can tell you, they say they like each other, but they don't like each other. Right. But we actually do like each other. Yeah, yeah. we have a good time. Yeah. And it shows. It's incredible. But um, I think I do have one last question for you about Mr. Okay. Mike. Um. He's slowly getting closer and closer to the truth about aliens and about Harry. Um, how does this like gradual revelation impact uh, your portrayal of Mike? And like, what aspects of this like little unfolding mystery, like peeling back the layers, excites you the most for his development? That's a great question. Um, you know where he is. I think he's still firmly in the mindset of conspiracy. Mm -hmm. uh with with especially with the you know the episode that just aired i think um you know it's 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 a great question i think the thing that really changed things for mike with respect to i i don't think he necessarily thinks there are this alien thing but there's definitely something where the fake police officers coming to deputy lives home um mm -hmm. at the in season two when they when we took the van to the res yeah. i think him seeing them, seeing them in uniform, seeing them in marked patrol cars. Uh, and he makes that comment about say hi to the other lieutenant. And they say, sure. And there is no lieutenant. That more than anything. I mean, you know, I try to walk this interesting line with Mike because I don't want to portray him as inept. I don't want to portray him as um, not being a good investigator. 
Mm-hmm. What what I try to to aim for, and it's a very narrow line to walk, is someone who is so driven by wanting to be seen as the hero that he's stumbling over himself. Right. And that's what Deputy Liv helps. She's like the moon for the earth, kind of keeping him on his axis and not all over the place right. because he's just so eager to be recognized in this way. Um, and maybe that's a part of some sort of healing for some of what he feels were his shortcomings coming from DC. Um, you know, everybody on our show is trying to fix some aspect of their life. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very relatable to uh, the good. audience. Oh yeah. And every, I was, uh, again, I was talking to Sarah and Alice about this yesterday. The whole thing with um, Asta taking Jay to the reservation and them get, like becoming closer and everything speaks very loudly to me as a mom. And then you have Absolutely. Darcy, hot mess, pulling vodka bottles out of the couch. Again, I am a very, I am also red haired, but I am very, <laughs> very much a hot mess, just like Darcy. And I'm trying to figure myself out, and you know, especially in the last few months. And again, very relatable. And then the thing with Mike, you know, he wants to be seen and acknowledged in that light. And like, he's doing something, you know, it's I, again, very relatable. It's it, this entire Absolutely. Is very a ball of relatableness that just gets tossed in my face every time. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think one of the unit one of the unique components of how this show is designed is that you know there's something for everyone. If you like the sci-fi stuff, we have that. If you like um, those emotional, like this is us moments to a degree. You know, we give you that. I think there's a very humanizing aspect to all of the characters. And it gives every audience member someone's shoes to travel in, mm-hmm. to feel like I connect with this person. Wow, I would react that way. Or wow, you know, I would feel that way about that. Or, you know, it just, it keeps everyone plugged in. And I think that that's a unique thing in uh, when it comes to storytelling and television in particular, but in general. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And you guys know it. You guys nailed it. But unfortunately, I think that's all the time I have to chat with you today. All right. Um, we'll do it next time, Camilla. Yes. I really hope we get a third time to chat because you are amazing. I, I love the entire cast of the show. You guys are so down to earth and easy to talk to. Thank you for making my job easy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.